live. You may notice my surroundings look a little bit different, and that is because I am at my uh, day jobs office, and um, I have no power at home, no internet. Uh, I do have power, technically. I have a generator, but that's just not the same. Um, but I do have um, lights, and I have warmth, and I have, you know, a bathroom that's functional. So I have the important things. Uh, but I don't have internet. And so I decided to come up to work, which is about 15 minutes away. My husband and I grabbed a bite to eat uh, before coming here. And then um, he's in the other room relaxing, waiting for me to shoot this. And then we're going to go pick up some ice cream for the way home, I think. But I wanted to bring you something that I had hoped to bring you yesterday during the snowstorm. But again, I lost power. So we've, we're going on 36 hours. We've lost it, I guess, for 36 hours right now. And uh, I'm hoping that we're getting it back tonight. We've seen some line crews in our area, so we're hopeful. Um, for those of you who are not in this area, Southern Maine got hit really hard with a snowstorm. We had bare ground. It, you know, birds were chirping. The, you know, it was 50s, even pushing towards 60, uh, just a few days ago. And then yesterday we got dumped on some places, uh, local. In Wells, I got about six inches of very wet snow. And uh, in Sanford, where I'm working, uh, we got about uh, probably 12 or so, 12 to 15. And then just a couple of uh, towns around us. Uh, I have coworkers who have gotten uh, 21 and 23. So and very wet and heavy, very sticky. So um, for those of you not enjoying snow, that's our life right now. And next week it will be in the 40s and 50s and high, upper 50s, maybe even 60s. Um, so this will be gone soon and it will really be spring. So I wanted to bring you a fun fold that uh, a team member had shared with me. I'm going to turn you down right now. Let's see if I can do this. All right. Just adjust this a little bit. There, I think that's pretty good. Okay, and so this is the card that she had passed out at a local team meeting. And so our team meeting is uh, the first Monday of the month. So we had that on April 1st. And she was showing um, another project because I'd asked her to share another project. But then she's so sweet. She just, she found this card uh, done by Tammy, well, uh, Tammy White and loved it. And so she gave it to all of us. And so I kind of did a tease and said, maybe on the snow day I would do it. But since I couldn't, I'm gonna do it right now. But this is a nice little fun fold and there's actually two layers here that this tucks into. And so just a cute and simple little card. This one uses the, oh shoot, I thought I would, it's, um, I thought I would remember what it is. It's the uh, Stargazing Designer Series paper. And that is going out shortly. This is in the annual catalog that is current and is only good through the end of the month. So I see a bunch of you are watching. If you are able to, chime in the chat and let me know who's watching and where you're from. Um, but anyway, here's the card and I'm going to do a non-stargazing version of this, mainly because all my stargazing paper is used up, has been used up. So um, it really is fun, fun paper and you know, I didn't get the stamp set that went with it. Don't really need to. It's got lots of nice, fun images, as you can see what Susan used here. So anyway, I'm going to use the perennial lavender paper, which is what I'm doing a spring retreat around in just a couple weeks. And so I have a couple of patterns here. And I've got some black and white paper. And you will need to start with a piece of, well, I guess you need to start, this is the base. It's four and a quarter by five and a half. So it is basically just a regular quarter sheet of cardstock. And I've chosen black. Gorgeous grape would have been a good choice here, maybe even Lost Lagoon. Uh, but I went with black to make things really pop off it. And I've got this piece that is just a quarter of an inch smaller. And all these dimensions are over on my blog and the link is in the description of this video, which I will make public as soon as I'm done shooting it. 
And um, so I'm gonna be using this purple side. Now before I adhere it, I have to do a few other things though. So don't adhere yet. Two and a half by four inches. And then I'm using a piece of basic white that is the same measurement as this one was. So two and a quarter by three and three quarters. And one piece of basic white that is two by three and a half. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with this piece of three by four paper. Now I'm not using this pretty, pretty side here. I'm just using this side because I want I don't wanna distract from my focal point, which I'll do in a little bit. On this paper, you're gonna turn it so that the three inches is along your um, bottom here or top, whichever way you use your cutter. And you're going to score it at one inch. So this divides it into, uh, um, and I can fold it so that you can see. Actually, I wanna fold it the other way, I think. Um, a piece that's one inch wide, and then this is two inches wide. Okay, now this measurement is four inches. On the back side, because I don't want anything to show, I'm gonna find the halfway point, and halfway of four is two. So I'm gonna mark this just with a little pen right here. And now I'm gonna, I'm gonna just to make it easier probably to find on camera, I'm gonna mark that one inch score line too on those edges. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna score from this edge to the edge on this point. So I'm gonna put those two things in my ditch of my paper trimmer. and I'm going to score it. Now remember this is designer series paper, so you don't want to have to, you don't want to press down too much. Hi Ruth. Oh, you're in Florida. It's cool there. Um I'm not sure it's as cool as it is up here. We did just get a bunch of snow. But I'll give you cool for Florida. And so here's the other one and I'm just going to make that score. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to fold on those score lines. And I don't know if I can even see my score lines. I might, oh, there we go. And I should have brought my bone folder up with me, but I don't think I did, I did not. So we'll just have to go with it the way it is. So you can see how these kind of, well, I was a little bit off on one of my scores. I'll just fix that, okay? And it doesn't have to be totally perfect. I'm gonna just adhere this down. Put a little bit of glue here and adhere that one down. I've already gone ahead and done the same thing on another one. So you treat these two pieces exactly alike. I'm just gonna fold them down here. Put them in here. Okay, so now you've got these one little inch tab places, but what this, this piece will get adhered to the back of the purple designer series paper. So it looks like that. I'm just gonna put a little bit more here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. Let me see. Oh, this one's got a better point at the bottom. I'm gonna use this one. Okay. So we'll just make sure that that's adhered down firmly. Okay, so these guys come up. Oh, this one didn't get adhered yet inside. I switched it out and I forgot that I hadn't adhered these. All right. So we've got this going on. And now you can adhere this to your base. Ooh, kind of looks pretty on the other side, doesn't it? And this just gets centered on here. I'm just 
going to make that a uniform border all the way around. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn our attention to the inside of the card and an inside sentiment. So I've got this piece of two inch by three and a half, I think it was. And I'm going to bring in a sentiment set. And I'm going to bring in my new one, my new favorite, Comforting Thoughts. So it's got a lot of great little sentiments. Um, I have someone in mind for this. And I'm going to do Thinking of You, Praying for You, and Hoping with You. So it's someone that is going through some cancer treatments. Ooh, you know what I forgot? I forgot my blocks, but I do have them here at work. So let me go get them. Whew. Saves the day. I keep some of them here because I hold my classes here sometimes. Almost times. And if I don't have them here, it's a it can be bad if I don't have any blocks for my classes. So I can either stamp this in Lost Lagoon or Highland Heather. Um, I think I'll go with Lost Lagoon here. This is a photopolymer set. This is an online exclusive, so you're not going to find it in any catalog. And then I can just have a little space to sign my name. I'm going to adhere this to the basic black piece that is just slightly larger. This is two and a quarter by three and three quarter. And then I'm going to adhere that to the center of my card. I'm going to really try to find the center here. Uh, that looks pretty good. Yep, that looks pretty good. All right. Now let's go ahead and stamp our focal point. So for that, I'm going to bring in my painted lavender set. And again, this is what I'm doing with for my spring retreat in two weeks. If you are, um, if you have not registered, I have just two spots left. First come, first served. I'm going to take this piece right here, the lavender blooms. I'm going to show you a little technique here, too. Oh, you know, this is my work surface, so I should probably protect it. So I don't get ink on it. And I'm going to ink up my Highland Heather. There we go. And I'm going to bring in a gorgeous grape, which is from the Brights Collection, Stampin' Right Marker. And I'm going to take the brush tip end and I'm just going to tap in a few places. This is going to add a little bit of depth of color so that it's not all uniform. And my Highland Heather is pretty juicy, so it may not be quite as obvious, especially on camera. I'm going to huff on it. And so... I don't know if you can see there's there's some spots where it's darker and um, it's hard. It's really pretty hard to see on the camera. I've got my my um, I'm pointing over there. I've got my computer that I'm watching. So it's, I can see that it's hard to see that. I'm going to bring in another image and these are the stems. And I'm going to ink that in the Lost Lagoon. And it's going to run off my paper and I'm going to be okay with that. Okay, so there we have that. So pretty. So pretty. All right. So now let's mount this onto the piece of basic black that is two and a half by four inches. Let's see. So 
I'm hoping for all my friends that still don't have power and internet, like I don't at home, I'm hoping you get it back soon. We did see see some people in our neighborhood, some line crews, so hopefully that's going to be good. All right, now, when I'm putting this on here, this actually comes underneath. Let me bring in my other piece here. So this part tucks in, but this is firmly attached, and this um, this piece right here is stuck in between two black layers. Okay, now these happen to be the same size. I'm gonna use one slightly smaller over here, and look at how it just, it kind of lines up. Oh, I say sm slightly smaller. It's the same size as the inside one, so I can line that up right there. And what I wanna do is I want to adhere it, I didn't move it, right? Okay, I'm gonna adhere it to this triangle, just like that. Okay, so that's stuck down here, all right? And then I want to adhere this over it, but I can't really tell if it's centered or not when it's closed like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over and I can see now where I kind of want it. So what I'm gonna do is this, this flap has to come in and tuck in here. So when I adhere or put in some dimensionals, which let me find my dimensionals, I want to avoid where that little point is gonna come. So I'm gonna put some dimensionals right here and here. And right here and here. And I can go ahead and put one up here as well. I can even put them in the corners if I wanted to. All right, let's see. Let's see what we got going on here now. Try not to make a mess of my office. Well, anybody that knows me knows that my office is quite often got a lot of stuff in it. Okay, and so now I can see that the edges are about the same there. So I'm just gonna lightly put that down. And you can see now you don't see anything showing underneath except for this. You can go ahead and you can tuck that in. And there's our card. All we need to do is add a little bit of something, something here. And let me see if I have my glue dots. That might be the one thing I don't have around here, and it is. But you know what? I have a little bit of tear and tape, so I'm just gonna make the best of it here. I take the backing off the tear and tape, see if I can do it when it's on my finger. Maybe I can. Yeah, there we go. And then I'm gonna just roll this up a little bit. So I've kind of made my own glue dot. I've already tied a bow with my linen thread. And so we put this right on there. I'm gonna give my ends a little trim here. I unwound them from the last of the spool, so these ends will have to come down a little bit. So there we have that. And then I thought one other thing that might be fun to add. Now there are little butterflies in here in the stamp set, but I'm gonna bring in these brushed brass ones. I'm just gonna put a couple in here. Uh, maybe we'll put that one up here flying away. And then we'll put one right here maybe. And then we'll put a larger one somewhere. Where are we gonna put the larger one? Right here, maybe. And there we have a much springier card than the weather outside is alluding to. What do you think? Give me a heart, a little heart or a thumbs up if you like it. It really was very simple to make, don't you think? I mean, nothing hard about this. I didn't have to die cut anything. Um, now, I could have used the um, postage, perennial postage dies. 
that kind of came in the suite with the painted lavender. So the painted lavender came with its own dyes. It cuts out some of the images. But it also had another stamp set, the perennial postage, which were a bunch of sayings and the postage dies. And so they kind of have a, you know, a jagged edge like a postage stamp. So I could have used that for these layers. But again, I'm stamping off premises, so I don't want to, I didn't want to drag a whole bunch of stuff up here. But that's what I have for you. I'm going to just turn around so I can say goodbye. Hello, there I am again. So thank you again for joining me. Again, the measurements, the descriptions of everything are on my blog. Link is in the direction or in the description of this video. And it's not too late to register for my spring retreat that is in two weeks. Uh, the deadline though is on Sunday. So I've extended it because of the snowstorm and everybody being out of power. So if you wanna join me for that, uh, don't forget to register. Um, the You'll get a $50 value swag bag uh, that comes with this DSP, among other things. And you'll have six projects, and we'll have food, and we'll have games with prizes. It's going to be lots of fun, so I hope you'll join me. But if not, if you're in Florida like Ruth, maybe come visit me sometime again. Uh, she visited me last summer, so it's about time for another visit. Right, Ruth? Um, maybe I should go visit you sometime. Mm. Anyway, I hope you all have a great weekend. And for those of you without power, I hope you get it back soon. Stay well.